Hi everyone, I'm Rita Peterson with Everything Homemade and we are going to transplant tomato plants. This is my helper and my daughter Ocean who is eight and a big thank you for Nova who is seven years old and is filming. So let's recap here. Now I've been posting a lot of gardening videos over the last week because guess what I'm doing? Gardening. And let's just take a look. So Nova, slowly move the camera over here. So we got the cucumbers planted and they're growing. They already doubled in size since I transplanted the corn. The red beets are growing with, with the weeds, um, which we're going to have to do some serious weeding. Again, this is the first year I've ever planted this garden, so we'll see what comes up. The squash is in the back there. The carrots are actually coming up. The dill's coming up. The lettuce, the radishes. You can't really notice much, but things are coming. So over here, so what happened was we went crazy with this and then we had about four days where we couldn't plant the tomatoes due to circumstances. So this is my tomato bed. Now you kind of can see, so show them Nova where we're kind of planting here. No, just straight, just, just tape it over. Look over here where my finger is. Go that way, show them. Okay, all right, no, Grace and Annika are working. Keep going. Good girl. Okay, they're kind of playing in the dirt that, that we've worked here. All right, so this is a pretty big area. It's about um, 32 feet, and we're looking at about five feet wide in some places, all the way to about seven feet wide. So it's a pretty big area that we're gonna be planting these tomatoes. Now, I wanted to plant this in five or six days ago when they were smaller and they are growing out of my pot like crazy. But as you know, sometimes life is life and things happen and sometimes you just can't do it. So today's the day. A um, couple things about transplant. Try to do in the evening. I'm not today, um, but I really, really tried to do in the evening. But lately, I've been up till ele since ele till 11 o'clock at night and up at four for the last two weeks mm. and it's just not happening so we're gonna plant during the day today's only supposed to be 20 degrees Celsius so try to pick a cooler during the day if you need to the other thing is dry out your pots before you transplant the biggest thing is when you're working with your plants you don't want wet dirt and soil around those roots because once you pop them out if it's wet it actually breaks the roots and your plants go into a heavier shock so dry out your plants the night before if you can. If you can plant in the evening, great. If you can't, make sure it's a cooler day where it's the, so the sun doesn't stress them out. Make sure your plants are hardened off. And now I'm going to, <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a hole and as I do it, Ocean's gonna do it. And we're gonna transplant two plants and I'm gonna show you how to separate a big clump of plants like this that is gotten a little bit out of control, but we will tame it right away. The other thing that I have is, is my bucket of uh, goose poo. This is gold in gardening world. Um, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna dig the hole, put the goose poo, put dirt, put the plant on, and that way when the roots get bigger, the goose poo will break down very quickly, very easily, and it'll give that plant that nitrogen boost like none other. A word with manure. You can use what? Waterfowl manure, no problem. Um, right, right into your garden, and rabbit manure, no problem. Right into your garden. What I do know, cow manure, absolutely not. It needs to sit for a year. Um, chicken manure will burn things out if you add it right away. Horse manure will. Goat and sheep I'm not familiar with, but I would, you know, decompose it a little bit more before you add it in. But what I love about my waterfowl is you can use their manure instantly. You can add it in water and put it right on the plants instantly. So there is benefits to every little critter. Are you ready, Ocean? Enough of mom blabbing, hey? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my hole here and you're going to make your hole here. So let's start digging. So you want to dig a fairly big hole. Even though these tomato plants are um, not too big, but we want to bury their stems as much as possible. And I see I'm hitting clay a bit. 
we don't got as deep uh, ground here as the rest of the garden. So yeah, for yep, yeah, deeper. So for viewers that haven't um, followed my channel for too long, we moved in September 2016 to this new permanent home. And so this is the first year that I've gardened their spot. So there's a lot of weeds, a lot of work, but we'll work on it. So there's some things I'm discovering as I am even filming and working the dirt. One is we need to condition this dirt and add some fiber to it. But for this year, we'll deal with that in the fall. Why are you getting there? I need a sharp shovel. <laughs> So I'm going to give my daughter a hand here for a second. So the best way of teaching, the best way of teaching your children gardening is let them do it. There you go. Is let them do it right beside you. I make a hole, she makes a hole. I plant the seed, she watches, and then they do it. And my rule of thumb is, is that you plant a little extra tomatoes, you plant a little extra cucumbers, you plant a little extra squash, and you let your children help you, and if they kill one, doesn't matter. They've learned, and they will do it better the next time. But that way, you're not stressing because your numbers are too low. They practice. And you know what? Kids really do well when they're working with the real thing, and they really want to learn. So how's your hole going there? Not too bad. Oh, grab a little bit more. I want it a little deeper yet. It's because we're hitting clay a bit. There you go. It's fine. Okay. So what we want to do first thing is let's pop a tomato plant out here and I'm going to show you how to do it. So what I've done is there's actually um, popsicle sticks here. So this side is cherry tomatoes and this side is beef steak. And I'm going to start with my beef steak. So, again, because we didn't know we were gardening, none of this was under grow light, so I was growing them the best that I could under circumstance that we just didn't have everything set up because of a move. So I'm just going to split them like this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take a spoon. A spoon is a wonderful tool for this. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm gonna take this clump right here out. So I'm gonna go through it. I'm breaking roots, yes I am. And I'm gonna pop it out. Okay, then what I'm gonna do is I wanna test my height. And that's not going to be too, too bad. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna separate these plants. Now how do we do that? Watch, because this dirt is dry but it's not dry enough to kill the plants how you want to separate plants like this is literally moving the dirt and take the plants off because it's not wet they're not going to stick together near as bad again i take the two and tomato plants like to stick together like velcro i move it kind of Try to separate these, Just kind of work with the dirt, and pull apart so you have roots. Do you get that, Nova? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm going to put these two, these three here, and we're going to put a scoop of manure, a good poo, just like that. So you put a scoop in there, kind of spread it out in there, that hole. Give it a little shower of water because water helps dissolve this. Beautiful. Get a little water in yours too. Okay. It doesn't smell very nice, but the plants love it. Okay, so kind of squish up the manure. Are you getting this in the hole, Nova? Mm -hmm. Can I get a little closer or not? Kind of squish it up. There. It dissolves. And then what we want to do is put a little bit of dirt over it because that'll help um, so the roots don't go and touch it right off the bat. Okay, then we take our plant. So grab a plant, their ocean. Mm -hmm. And because these are leggier, now these are probably the worst specimen plants I've ever grown. Because usually mine hit the grow light, 
They're nice and short with such thick stalks, but I will accept these plants, I guess, this year. I feel kind of horrible, but, but what we're going to do to save mm, not having a grow light set up or anything set up for garden, we're going to bury them like this because the stem will come and shoot out new roots like and that yeah and that way it will strengthen my stems okay so this is how you save a plant like this and because if i if i put my dirt right here ocean what's going to happen is the wind's going to go and they're just going to break off like this and totally not do well um what we're going to do is we're going to strengthen it and let it grow from here back up now, if you notice that now my hole is a little bit too big or too deep, so I'll just plop some dirt in. Let me try mine. Yeah, too deep. Okay. And this is why we took some out. And that looks about, about right. So what we're going that to do better. now, yeah, is bend your root. You got this, Nova? Mm -hmm. Just kind of checking it with my daughter here, make sure she's following. And put that dirt around that tomato plant. Mommy. And this will cause the roots to come out of the stem and actually will create a stronger plant and you won't even notice that they were leggy and that I didn't have a problem. Whoa, don't grab your other plant. Didn't have a proper setup and they'll grow beautifully in that dirt. Look, Mom. You did an awesome job. So what you want to do, you see how it's bending this way? Yeah. What you want to do is grab some dirt and just straighten that stem out and press the dirt around it. It's really important to press the dirt firmly around your plants. There. And now you have like a little well. A well around it. And now we will what? water it. Can I water this one? Yeah, you can water yours after. Because now we want to water it in well. Just like that. Make sure you don't water on top because because sometimes then they just droop. So make sure you water around and make sure you've got a good well so your water is not going to go anywhere. Get those weeds out of the way and you're good to go. So those that's what we're going to do. 32 feet down and uh, that's good. And across. Now what we're going to do too is I'm going to leave a walkway. So from here to like here, I'm going to leave bare. Then we're going to plant another three and we're going to go all the way down so we can walk in the middle of our rows. So that's how you have it. Um, that's what we do tr transplanting tomato plants. The other thought that just came to my head before I conclude is the idea with having manure at the very bottom actually came from an old article what they did in the Maritimes. I want to share this with you because it'll bring um, maybe some ideas to your head about plants is in the Maritimes when they had a whole bunch of extra you know dead fish and and oysters and all that stuff that you find there gardeners like a hundred years ago would plant their garden when they plant their rhubarb in their cucumbers in or their tomatoes in they actually dug the hole deeper put a dead fish in covered it with dirt and then put a tomato plant on top now I don't have dead fish I have actually very limited access to fish, but I do have manure. So I'm taking that idea, using it with my garden plants, letting it decompose so when the roots get bigger, they just, they get the um, uh, nutrients they need at the right time. And that way I'm not constantly fertilizing my plants. It's already in the ground. Now we better get this one in that's laying. So you want to dig another hole there, Ocean? But right, yeah, oh, right there. And then we will tomato cage these this year or stake them. I haven't quite decided what we're going to do, but they do need support. The other thing about tomato plants, um, and I like to make my videos really, really informative, is you need to know the difference between determined and indetermined plants. Just wait. Determined and indetermined plants. So determined plants, they grow to a specific height and they stop growing. So all of these are determined so in northern climates you really want to strive for determined because they'll grow here they'll stop growing then they'll put all the energy into the fruit and actually ripen in august we only and they're about 60 days like you're looking for a 60 day tomato if you go indeterminate means they continue to grow forever so 
they grow, produce a little bit of fruit, grow, produce fruit, grow, produce fruit, but they, fruit doesn't necessarily always ripen. Because our season is very short, we don't get an even ripening, you're waiting a long time, and there's a lot of trimming, a lot of pruning, and it's quite annoying actually, so I tell people always to go determine, and you can find that on your seed package. So, happy tomato planting, if you have any questions, Put it on the comments. I'll be happy to answer them for you. Thank you so much for watching.